Okay, so we've proved rather formally one of the results that are presented here, namely the one that states that regular languages are closed under the union. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to prove the other three statements, but in this video, I'm going to do this in a, a more compact and more rapid um, way where I'm not going to totally elaborate on the formal construction of, say, delta prime. Um, and I'm just going to give you the intuition as to why each of these statements are true. Okay. So let's do that right away then. And we'll start with the first one that if L1 and L2 are regular, then L1 can cat L2 is also regular. Okay, well, how would we actually prove this? If L1 and L2 are regular, that means that there are DFAs, M1 and M2, such that L of M1, right, the language accepted by M1 is L1, and the language accepted by M2 is L2. So we have these two machines, M1 and M2, okay. The machine M1 has a start state, let's call it Q0, Q0, 1, okay. The machine, and it has some final states, right. The machine M2 also has a start state, let's call it Q0, 2, and it also has some final or accept states, okay. Now, what we need to do, right, we need to create a machine M prime such that the language accepted by M prime is equal to L1 concat L2. And now remember, I'm doing this for any arbitrary regular languages L1 and L2. And so if I do this for any arbitrary regular languages, then I can state that this is true for any pair of regular languages. And so then that would mean that for any pair of regular languages that I pick in particular, if I concatenate them together, um, this concatenation of languages will also be regular. And so I don't need to actually create a new FA because I know that I have this general construction that always holds, okay? But what is this actual general construction? Well, the idea um, behind creating the machine M prime that accepts L1 concat L2 is to actually remember what the formal definition of L1 concat L2 is. L1 concat L2 is the set of strings, let's say x1, y, no, let's not call them that actually. Let's say w1, w2, such that w1 is in L1 and w2 is in L2. Okay, so a string is in L1 concat L2 if the first part of the string is in L1 and the second part of the string is in L2, right? But if the first part of the string is in L1, that means that if you start, if you take that string W1, you give it to M1 and it runs through it in its computation, it's going to end up in a final state, right? And it's only going to end up in a final state because that's what it means for the language accepted by M1 to equal exactly L1. Right, it means that um, the strings that start at Q01 and end in the final states are exactly the strings in the language L1. Right, there aren't any other strings um, that go to a set of to any of the final states that aren't in L1. Okay, so it's an if and only if. Right, so I know that. W in L1 means that um, starting at Q01, if I read W1, I end up in a final state, okay? And then I also know that for W2, right? So if I start at Q02 and I read W2, then I know, and W2 is in L2, I know that I'll end up in another final state in the machine M2, right? And so to accept any pair of concatenation of strings, W1, W2, where W1 is in L1 and W2 is in L2, all I need to do 
is just allow the first part of the string to go through the computation of M1, and then the second part of the string to go through the computation of M2, okay? But how do I know, um, how do I know if the computation of M1 is done uh, and that I should skip, um, that I should go to the computation of M2? Well, I can guess, right? I can guess at what point my string is uh, done being read in M1, and then I can transition to M2. The only condition is that I need to transition from M1 to M2 in a final state, right? Because if I go from the initial state to some final state, right, um, then at this point I can say, oh, well, I guess I can go to the new, uh, to the second machine M2 and then read the remainder of the string W2 and then end up in another accept state, okay? That's the idea of creating the larger machine M prime. So the idea of M prime is that uh, you simulate, right? So M prime given put string W simulate the first part of W in M1, right? Reach a final state and then jump to M2 to finish the second half of the computation. Well, it doesn't actually have to be the second half, right? So you don't have to take the exact middle of the string. It can just be the second part. Okay. And so what does that actually look like? That looks like the machine M prime is just, is this larger machine M prime. This is the new start state S of M, right? So if I have Q prime, sigma delta prime S of prime, okay. S is going to be Q01, right? So you start your computation in M1, right? Because the concatenation is L1 concat L2. Then you run through the computation of M1, so you use the transition function delta one. Um, and then at each of the final states, you add an empty string transition to the start state of M2. Okay. Now the only caveat here is that you have to remove, okay, you have to remove the final states from M1. You have to do this because um, if you don't do that, what could happen is that you could accept all of the language L1, okay? And that might not, the strings in the language L1 might not also be in the language L1 concat L2, okay? So what I need to do is I need to remove the final states in M1, okay? Otherwise, um, I could end up never jumping to the machine M2. Otherwise, M prime has no incentive, let's say, has no incentive of jumping to M2 to read the remaining, the remaining portion of the string. Okay, and so these are no longer the final states. Oops, put this back here, okay. And so then that means that if I'm given some string, so if I'm given some string W, which is W1, W2, W1 is an L1. Then I'll read W1, okay? Because W1 is in L1, it'll reach one of the final states in M1, which is no longer a final state in M prime, at which point I can jump to the start state of M2, and then I can 
resume the second part of the computation, which will lead to a final state in M2, which means that the set of final states, right, of final states in M prime is going to be the set of final states from the machine M2, okay? And the transition function, you could formalize it, but really this is the idea of what the transition function would look like, um, right? So you would use all the same transitions from M1, okay? Once you hit one of the final states from the um, machine M1, which are no longer final states in M prime, you add the option okay, of a lambda transition to the initial state of M2. And then in M2, you, you keep the same transition delta 2. Okay? So the only extra thing you're adding is you're adding this guess. right? You're adding this guess of when the NFA should transition, right? because this is now an NFA, when the NFA should transition from reading uh, the string in M1 to reading the string in M2. And um, what we said about non-determinism is that it can always make the correct choice when there is one, okay? And so this is how, um, this is kind of like the proof idea or the, or the sketch of how you would show that the concatenation of regular languages is closed um, or how regular languages are closed under the concatenation. I won't go into a more detailed formal argument, but this is the sort of, uh, general idea, um, and hopefully uh, it's clear enough.